Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Let me know if you can hear me okay. If you want to say hello. Good morning. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Ali, Eileen, Caro, Elizabeth, Vanessa, Lisette, and Omar. Welcome. Today's June 9th, 2020, and we're just wrapping up, almost wrapping up week 16, almost wrapping up the semester. Uh, we're going to complete this week finishing the sonnet. This Friday is a reminder we're going to do our final poetry reading. So we're going to include all four poems. So don't forget uh, the other three poems if you are still working on those. Of course, if you want me to look at any of your poems, feel free to send me a chat, and I'll be happy to look at them, give you some feedback outside of class. This week, however, we're focusing on the sonnet. Yesterday, we looked at many of your first quatrains and we practiced reading it, reading them we practiced or we looked at iambic pentameter which is again the most challenging aspect i think of writing the sonnets remember iambic pentameter each line's going to have 10 syllables da 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 and i am is simply two syllables first weak then strong or some or non stressed and then a stressed syllable so the hard part, the challenging part of writing a sonnet, I think, is making sure that we follow iambic pentameter and that we also respect the normal stress of the words. So today I'd like to continue as we did yesterday, and I'd like to begin with anyone who uh, maybe I didn't have a chance to see your sonnet yesterday. I'd like to give you first dibs as it were, and start by hearing your quatrain and then looking at it in terms of iambic pentameter, also the rhyming scheme. And remember that the purpose of writing our sonnet is to praise someone or something, right? Or some object, maybe it's something related to nature. Of course, if you're choosing individuals like a special person in your life and you're dedicating this sonnet to that person hopefully you'll have a chance to deliver or read this poem uh, to that person right that's the idea all right before we get into it are there any questions general questions about developing the sonnet uh, based on what we've talked about in prior classes Yes, teacher, I have one question. Mm -hmm. Yes, go ahead. Uh, all the content words uh, need to be weak strong? Um, so, so think about, yeah, so any words that you stress, it doesn't matter if the word is one syllable, two syllables, or even three syllables, need to fall more on the content words than on the function words. Function words are words like articles, prepositions, right? They're words that really don't have a lot of uh, meaning. And I would also extend the, uh, in, in addition to function words, word pronouns like I and you, and even the verb to be, those words typically want to be, uh, they should be not stressed okay they shouldn't be stressed right so if the easiest example uh if i say i sing i sing so notice how i is is weak right we're not stressing i normally right I, I, there, of course there are exceptions right i could say i sing right instead of this other person but normally we say i sing i dance right i study notice i'm not i'm not stressing the pronoun i and so think of the function words think of typically pronouns personal pronouns i should say and think about the verb to be and try to think of those types of words 
as not being stressed. Now, the content words, I would try to focus on stressing those, right? Those are going to be typically nouns and adjectives and adverbs, right? Um, those are going to be, those have, those words have a lot of meaning. And we don't want to lose those words. When I say when we lose those words, what I mean by that is we're not stressing those content words. Now, when you're thinking as being one syllable, two syllables, or three syllables, try to think of those words, for example, table. All right, table. two syllables. Now, this is a content word, okay? It's a, it's a content word, but it has two syllables, so what we have to make sure about iambic pentameter that the normal stress, da -da 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 falls within the normal stress of the word table. So I can't begin the line table. Okay? I know that right off the bat, and I also know that I can't end any line of a sonnet with the word table. Why? Because it's strong, weak. Two syllables and the last two syllables of every line of the sonnet needs to be what? Weak, strong. Da da. So, we'll use the word table simply for by putting, let's say, a function word. Right, for example, an article before the word table. So, at the, if I begin a line with the word table, instead of starting with the word table, I'll just put an article before it. A table, a table. Now it works. So a lot of you're like, oh, okay, this I want to use this content word. It's a good content word, but I'm not stressing it right. Maybe it's just a matter of taking away one single syllable, right? Because if you're off, all it takes is one syllable, one, the removal of one syllable before it, and guess what? It's going gonna, it's gonna to work. So that's the game. Playing, it's like a puzzle. We, we add a word, we take out a word, we, we rearrange it, right, so that at the end of the day, it follows that iambic pen. All right. So, does that does that help, Ali? Yes, teacher, got it. Okay. In any general questions, dive in. All right, I'm uh, sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, I'm just going to open it up. If somebody wants me to look at your, your, uh, your limerick, I, I want to, to hear your poems, look at your poems, give you some feedback, just some things to think about. I know some of you have completed your sonnet. But I'd like to take it kind of quite and uh, look at it in that case. So would anyone like to read their poem and we can take a look at it? Yes, me teacher. Okay, is that is this Lisette? No, it's Ali. Of the. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Who was that uh, that was wants me to look at your poem? Ali. <laughs> Ali. I couldn't yes. tell because when I have the. Yeah, the, the screen up, it's hard to, to know. No okay, Ali, let's take a look. Um, 
All right. Second one or the first quatrain? The second one. All right. All right. Okay. I like I like how you're using uh, my calma, right? So you're using that's that's good. That's interesting. So. Uh, Observations, looking just at the first line. In my lover, I found my home, my calmo. That was a mistake, teacher. It was my calm. <laughs> right? So my calm, my calm. All right. So, and that would that would help with the number of syllables because I think you had 11. But if you take out calma, uh, that should get us down to 10. Now, is there any part of this line that you think is better than than the other i mean do you are you do you think is there any part of this first line that that you yeah you think is not quite as good as the other part i think maybe in the part where it says in my lover all right so what do you think what what can you do to work on that, what would be? What would um, be the uh, solution? I don't know because I was like struggling a lot because I am not stressing lover, and I know that for a fact it it is a content word, but right. I don't know how to do it. Right. So in this case, you're focusing on my, right? So you would have to stress like, in my lover, I found my home, I come. Yes, exactly. All right. So, all right. So what, what I would suggest, what's a really easy way to at least fix the first two syllables, first two or three syllables? I mean, it's not going to fix the whole line, but how could you fix just the first two or three syllables of the, this line? What's an easy way to fix it? Maybe remove in. Okay, so that I would start there. So now you have my love verb done. Now you need something strong. Now, um, that's what I would try to work on in, the, in this line. My love or done. I'm found my huh, my calm. So see how I'm, I'm like I'm kind of thinking about the other words. I'm still trying to keep the rest of the line as much as I can from the rest of the, uh, the line because it's that's that's uh, I think a little bit stronger than the first part of the line. So you can say my love or done. I found my home my calm. Now you see what I did. I just pretty much did everything except there's a couple of one or two words that's missing. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what you can kind of work on. Now, you might decide later, depending on what decisions you make, it might alter the rest of the line. It may not. But that's that's the journey. That's what you need to kind of go through to fix that line. OK, but the, the important part is that you recognize the stronger and the weaker aspects of this first line. Right. And you also recognize how to fix it. Right, but now it's just a matter of playing with the words in between my lover and then everything else. Right now, the right. second line is is the word returns. Yeah, yes, I also have a mistake there. <laughs> okay, so returns the roaring tiger to its cave. Okay, I like that line. Returns the roaring tiger to its cave. Yeah, I like how that sounds also. Tiger to its cave. That sounds good. And this is why it's important to you guys to practice saying this out loud to see how it, to hear it, right? Because it, it needs to sound kind of, uh, you know, it needs to try to sound interesting. And, and the second line, notice how tiger to its tail. It's a lot of T sounds, right? So that's good. As he, now, as he healed my wounds with his patient balm. You hear that? Let's look at this yes. line here. Let's take a look at this one. 
And again, if this helps by capitalizing the syllables that you stress, I highly recommend that you, uh, you know, use this, even if it looks kind of weird, you know, it's, it's for you to, to, um, to get a handle on the, the, the stresses. So for example, here, it's going to be something like this, right? As he healed my wounds with right he healed my wounds with his patient so so you hear right this first part up to patient patient is fine and balm is fine but it's the first part of this the line right that's like here, you really want what's the strong words? Well, healed and wounds. We don't want to lose those words. And that's what I mean by losing the words. We're losing the words when we're not stressing them. As he, he healed my wounds, da, 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 patient, bomb. Right? So that's how you that's how you fix the line. You just do kind of what I did. You 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 know that. You've got a good line here. It's just you've got the stresses off. So you just get rid of the first word. Now you you fixed the one, two, three, four, the first four words. Actually, the first five words you just fixed just by removing the first word. He healed my wounds with da, uh -huh, his, let's see. He healed my wounds, da, da, a patient, bomb, da, da, a patient, bomb. So you just got to fit find the puzzle, you know, fix the puzzle in the middle of the, of the line. Mm -hmm. Right. So here would be something like he healed. Sorry. He healed my wounds with that. Patient bomb. So now your job is to try to see if you can connect the dots, so to speak. How can you connect this line with the strong and weak? That strong and then weak and then patient bomb. And you might even, if depending on what you use. You know, maybe you remove with depending, right? Depending on what you want to do. But you basically need to try to connect this line with this. Okay. Uh, let's see. And the fourth line, I knew this love would take it to the grave. I knew this love would take it to the grave all right so that's a good line so we got grave cave calm bomb now uh looking at the meaning so that's those would be that's my observation for the the stresses now now going back and looking at this how it sounds as far as like the significance and this is like two for me it's like two thought processes right one is because i can't think about both i have to first think about iambic pentameter and the, the rhyming like the structure of it and then i have to go back and say okay does this make sense do i what kind of message am i either receiving or if i'm writing the poem what kind of message do i want to uh to give out to the audience and so here in my lover okay i found my home my calm okay Re returns the roaring tiger to its cave all right so i'm thinking about um uh, i found my home all right so returns all right so maybe all right so I'm, I'm definitely getting an image here in the first two lines now the third line as he healed my wounds patient bomb all right okay i knew his love would take it. okay so yeah that, that looks for me at first i had to think about patient bomb but I get it. I see. I see what you mean. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 
And yeah, so notice here when I read a when I read you guys a poem, I'm not even looking at the significance at first. I'm not even looking at the meaning. You know, first I, I try to get the structure, and that's for when you guys are writing. Both it depends on you know how you want to approach it, but when I read it, when you guys are checking your work, right? Check, do you know think? Ignore the meaning of it, right? First, check the structure really specifically in terms of iambic pentameter and the rhyming scheme, and then go back also then say, okay, how does this, how does this sound? All right, uh, Ali, that looks uh, looks good. It's coming along. Just a couple of lines there to uh, to work to out. Fix. Okay, right. thank you, teacher. Okay, yes, got it. Teacher, can you check mine? Yes. All right. Do you want to look at the? I think we looked at the first one, right, Elizabeth? Yes. So we. Do you want to look at the second one? Yes. All right. All right, um, as you, you've got a really good um, quad train here. Just a couple of small observations. I, but I, as far as iambic pentameter, you do a really good job of stressing the right words. You do a good job with including good examples of figurative language. And I get the meaning, right? Everything, the, everything's coming across nicely. Now, the only observation that I have and it's a grammatical one. Now, there's some times we can take liberties in terms of certain grammar aspects, and I think other times uh, we we pretty much need to stick to certain grammatical rules, and so to not avoid it to sound a little uh, out there. So, the first line: "To swans that fly together side by side." Excellent. Second line: "Like wolves that give." Protection, loving bond. Uh, the loving bond is kind of supposed to follow with the so bright, like light and darkness. And, and I get it. I, I I like the idea, and I understand what you mean. I just the thing is with the articles. Uh. Like wolves that give protection. <clears throat> the thing is, for me, bond. We we I feel like we need an article there, and especially and also guide as guide, acts as I mean you would say acts as a guide, a a loving bond. <clears throat> um. You know, I like wolves that give protection, like wolves that give protection. Like in the second line, if you said something like through a bond, I mean, I know it's not as strong as saying loving bond, but through a bond would fit it grammatically and you know that's that's my observation like a x like here so bright so bright like light and darkness so bright like light and darkness as a guide something like that you know but I, I feel like there there needs to be an article for bond and and for guide and i really me personally you're show, you have the lines are so strong that even if you don't use loving it's implied throughout this line because again the lines are really strong 
So I don't think you lose that much by not including the word loving because the rest of the lines are really strong. You're actually showing, not telling. And which is what you want to do, you know, but that's, that would be my only observation is are those two words. Um, you know, the articles, that's a, a tough one for, for many lines because uh, many times, you know, we can't ignore uh, the article without sounding well, grammatically incorrect. And again, we can take some liberties in terms of word order, right? And even the omission of some words, we can use an ellipsis for some words, right? And that's fine, but not usually the article. So that so would be my, yeah. Would it be okay to stress the content word because it would be as, as a bond? Uh, let's see. So like wolves that give protection as a bond. Well, I can, I could live with that more than the omission of an article. Um, I, I actually like through personally through a bond a little bit more than as a, because if you want to say as a guide, the second, then you're not repeating those weaker words right some words you you want to repeat that are content words but you know you could say through a bond and as a guide basically does that does that make sense yes thank you okay you're welcome next can you check mine please is this caro yeah it's me Okay, the second quatrain, right? Uh, yes. Oh, and I, and I corrected the second line of the first one. The second line of the first one, oh man. All right, so it's, I love my dear, you come and bring me a line. A kinky fire is burning now. Hmm. A kinky fire. What is a kinky fire? For you, Akato, what what's the kind of the idea that you want to transmit when you say kinky fire? It is kinky, no? Kinky. So kinky, let's read the definition. In human sexuality, kinkiness is a use of a non-conventional sexual practice, concepts, and or fantasies. Uh, is that what you want to say? That's fine if you do. I'm just asking. I just want to make sure that we're on the same channel. Because this word, there's really no room for, like sometimes you can you can say certain lines that can can mean different things, but this one's pretty specific. So I just want to make sure that that this is what you want to say. Caro. All right, so looking at your I second. Am, the one came. What's that? Sorry? Oh, and the second one. Yeah, no. Nothing. Yo, I was just asking about that. Um, you know, decide. It's fine if you want. I, you know, if you want to include that, but um, I, yeah, just asking if what you think about that, that line. Now the second quad the second quad train I know the answer which is not too bad Now loving you is fine please come back soon right now right here right there I get so glad Now uh I think 
I see you're you're following iambic pentameter. You're okay with the the number of um the number of syllables. Dear and you know you're using like you're repeating right now, right here, right there. I get so glad. Um I would try to use a little bit more figurative language throughout your poem. Right. I mean, I don't know if you want to check, take a look at maybe some phrasal verbs, some uh, some basic uh, examples, maybe make a list. I don't know if you've had a chance to make a list of different figurative language options. Right. That we looked at, um, you know, similes, metaphors. Even um, onomatopoeias. Trying to use it, maybe it's not like. For example, in the third one of this, I thought I was using an 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 effort or whatever it is. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, uh huh. And also in the second one, I think it's um, assonance mm. or alliteration. In which line? In which line? Loving you and con. All right. Now, loving you is fine. Please come back soon. Let's see. Love and you, for me, they have a different sound. Uh and ooh. Uh and ooh. Come, I guess, if you know, love and come. And okay, so you're saying like you and soon. Now, love and you come back soon. Okay, all right. I didn't see that. Um, I know the answer, which is not too bad right now, right here. Right now, right here, right there, I get so glad. All right, so I get so glad. I get glad. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Get glad. I am glad. I get glad. I uh, actually, I, uh, I had I am, but then I was stressing and am. So I was trying to avoid that, so I changed it. Uh-huh. I'm Yeah, I'm just thinking um even a contraction I'm and then changing something there and, and finishing with glad. Uh I would still keep thinking about that. I'm I, I get so glad. Um, dear Isle, and then the last line, line, dear, dear Isle. Are you starting I the line with? I just, I just realized that. Uh, okay. Yeah. So maybe just start. I'll wait for you until then, and then June or something like that. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, that's fine. Okay. So yeah, I didn't see some of your. I see what you're, you're getting at here. Um, so maybe just focus on, I'll get so glad, see about that. And then the last line, because again, most of the last line is good. I'll wait for you until uh, warm June. And the warm June, the problem with putting two strong words together, right, is that you lose one of them, right? So for me, like if there's a way that you can include warm somewhere else in the line, uh, with, and stress it, and also stress June, that would be, uh, I think, a better way to to conclude uh, the line, because you're going to lose warm, you know, um, and, and, you know, you're focusing on next, which I think for me, warm is a little... So maybe if there's a way to say warm, and then something weak, and then June. You see what I mean? 
yes. The okay. same happened with the second line of the first. So I have to change yeah. it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, just try to change it. There, It's a good line, right? It's just trying to make it a little bit better, trying to really focus and not lose any words, especially really strong words. And for me, warm is probably one of the strongest words in this whole line. And so I definitely wouldn't want to not stress the word uh, warm, you know, if you if you can avoid it. All righty. Okay, good, uh, good job, Carol. Anybody yes, else? Yes. And I have oh, another yes. question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, do you actually? Yes. Sorry, sorry, Carol. Can you repeat that? Or right, how about this, Carol? Why don't you type me a message in Teams? You can do that, and I'll answer your question there because you're cutting out Teacher. a little bit. Yes. Eileen wants you to check her poem, but she can't use her microphone. Yes. It doesn't work. Eileen? Thank you. Okay, you're, you're welcome. Did you say yes. Eileen wants me to check? Okay. So I'm assuming Eileen, you can hear me. So, um... And am I checking the first quadrain? My nature. <coughs> real, real. I think real has one syllable, no? Fine, real. <coughs> real. I think it's just one syllable. Sometimes these words that I say over and over, and sometimes the way that I pronounce it, it may, I sometimes I have to check myself how many syllables certain words have because just the way real, real, two syllables. Well, here it says, I guess you could have two or one. Real, real, real. Okay. All right, I'll buy that. My nature, real love, inspired. Okay, my my nature, real love, inspire to write. I I count eleven. Uh, my nature. Real, like he, right here, even like I understand this. If you can see my screen, as your meaning that it's two syllables because you have R E with lowercase and A L in uppercase. So if that is the case, then love would be weak, right? So it'd be like weak, strong, weak. You see what I mean? I don't know. So I feel like there's something missing here. You've got Weak, strong, weak, and then you would have strong, weak, real, my nature, real, love, inspire, inspire, inspire. So inspire for the, the three syllables, I think. And you're indicating here as two. Inspire, inspire. Inspire. This is what I would do, guys, is look in the dictionary. This will tell you exactly how many syllables every word has if you're not sure. So here, look, there's three syllables. In, spire, and then er. Inspire. Okay, so uh, I think I would go with the uh, dictionary pronunciation here and the indication. And... Check this. I my nature. So the other observation I would make is re, my nature, real love. I, you would have to say inspires with an S. Inspires, love inspires. Now inspires to write. It's my nature, real love inspires to write. 
you know, I would if you can say something like inspires me to write, right? You could say you could end the line like that. Da 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 da. da inspires me to write. Then I love the way you come. You come. All right. So here you come. Uh, this is a transitive verb. You come. I think we need an object. You come someone to do something or you come you could say you calm down but you calm me you could say that you are calm you could say that but i think if you say you come i think we would need an object i love the way you come relax and shine all right so the ending is okay. I would just work on uh, in the middle of the line here. And the first part's okay. I love the way, but you may have to change some things to kind of work out the middle part. Today, I want to see my day and night. Today, I want to see my day. Today, I want to see my day. Today, I want to see, I'm just thinking of the meaning here. Today, I want to see my day and night. Okay, myself, I need, myself will need that sweet embrace this time. My, myself, yeah, I'm thinking in grammar. Myself, we typically don't use as a subject. It's a reflexive pronoun, and you're using it as a personal pronoun. And it, that's what's causing it, I think, to sound... A little awkward. I would try maybe to keep the rest of the line. We'll need that sweet embrace this time. The rest of the line is really strong. I would try to keep that, but maybe start it. And, you know, you don't even necessarily have to start with a, a subject. You can, you can say, we'll need that sweet embrace dun, dun, this time. We'll need that sweet embrace, da da this time. So just try to find something between embrace and this time, da da weak, strong. And then you fix the line. And I think that the line would be just as strong without using the subject. The flowers sing and call the pretty bees your floral, shiny, lovely, fun, and wild because your glant... Because you're glant like the, okay, maybe you're still working on the second quad train. I would take a look at the third line. Not, glant, glant, glant. Mm, glant, let's take a, yeah. So I'm not sure what, what you mean by glance or a glance, G-L-A-N-C-E, because your glance, you could say that, like someone taking, you know, taking a look at you, glance, you make me feel so happy like a child, okay? Yeah, so take a look at the third line in the second stand and the second quadrain. And yeah, what I mentioned in the first uh, quadrain, um, Eileen. All right, anyone else? Anyone else want me to take a look at your sonnets? Make sure, too, guys, that you're trying to include a title. Try to have a title for all of your poems, in fact, not just the sonnet. But on Friday, when we read our final poetry reading, try to come up with a good title for all four poems. Okay, so when you read your poem, you can begin with the title and then go right into the, uh, the poem. Anybody else want me to look at your sonnet or look at any quatrain?
Emmanuel, you want me to look at one of your uh, quad trains? Let me know. Omar, the sets. Uh, teacher. Yes? I hope uh, tomorrow I'll have maybe everything or, or at least two quad trains. So I will like you to check it, but tomorrow. All right. Yeah, just send me a, a message in Microsoft Teams when you're ready for me to uh, take a look at it. And if you okay. get that, okay. if you can do it uh, tomorrow, that would be good. That way, on Thursday, we can clarify any doubts that uh, that you have. Okay. Okay. All yeah. right. Tomorrow, Thanks. guys, remember we're going to have a review, our third review. Um, regardless of what score that you got, uh, you can't do. Uh, you can't do any worse, all right? So uh, I'm giving you guys these opportunities uh, in an attempt to improve your, your grade. Uh, but don't worry about it. if you get a lower grade. It's not going to uh, hurt your grade to take it again. So tomorrow in class, in our live session, we will, uh, again, do the uh, review, the online review. Then on Thursday, we'll do much like what we're doing today. Um, maybe try to hear more of you, uh, actually recite your poems. Um, but you know, if you guys want me to look at something outside of class, uh, just send me a message. We still have a few more minutes. If anybody wants me to take a look at anything in your sonnet. Anybody else want me to look at something? All right, guys, I think then we'll go ahead and stop there. Again, tomorrow we're going to have our review. And uh, Thursday we'll have our, be our last uh, class for dedicating our time to the sonnet. On Friday, we'll do our final poetry review our poem poetry reading I should say and then next week we'll have a, we'll have the whole week to focus on the online portfolio okay we haven't really talked much at all about it this semester but i wanted to spend this last week we've got one more week uh, to really dedicate our time to that uh, to complete the online portfolio all right, any questions about the sonnets? No, teacher, thank you. Well, all right, it's coming along, guys. Really, uh, a lot of the things we're looking at are just small changes, uh, and you guys are making really good progress in your sonnet. So uh, try to finish up if you can by Thursday. That way we can take a look at everything that everything else that we need to before Friday. Again, I want you to have received feedback from me at least once before your poetry reading on Friday, just so that hopefully you feel more comfortable to it. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and stop there. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you. Bye. Bye.